What's up everyone? Welcome to STP TV. I'm Mike. That's Rob. That's Clayton. This is a 5.3 LS motor that we've been doing a series of engine building on and today we're gonna put this sloppy stage 2 Elgin camshaft in there. Maybe get the cylinder heads on, at least get them cleaned up and put back together. So we're just doing a, uh, a lap, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> lap, lap dance. All the intake valves are pretty good, but you can see all the exhaust valves have quite a bit of pitting. So we're just taking some of uh, Rob's valve grinding compound, secret sauce. There's a before and then it's not perfect. I mean, ideally you'd want to get your valves ground, but this is our budget build so that's an after shot just take a bit of oil just put it on the valve stem because I'm using a, a drill bit to turn the valve just put a lapping compound a lot of guys use a lapping stick but uh, we're gonna use a drill and Like that. You can kind of hear when the uh, lapping compound gets thrown off the seat, so I'm just putting it back on there. So you can see most of the pits are starting to go. I'm going to do it another two or three times to get all those pits out. Pits. There's horsepower and machine work here. Once you're done lapping, you want to clean all the, you don't want to leave any lapping compound on there, but it's an intake, you want to make sure that the seat surface is nice and cleaned up all the way around, otherwise you probably have a bent valve. Same thing with the actual seat, just make sure all the compound's off. In the spirit of our how to build an engine videos, mentioning all the very simple things, obviously this is where the combustion chamber is. Intake air comes through that one, exhaust comes through that one, so if they don't seal well, that can hurt performance and a whole bunch of other things. But I'm sure you guys already knew that. The cylinder heads we're using on this 5.3 are the 799 castings that came on it. Rob and Clayton gave these things a final clean with the pressure washer, and they uh, turned out good enough for this build anyhow. Which has kind of been the motto with this build. Even though we've been calling it the master build, it's also the good enough build and the budget build. <laughs> but it's going to be the lots of horsepower and lots of fun build in the end, so... I don't have a lot of horsepower. Probably enough. Enough. More than enough. If you guys haven't seen the previous engine building episodes, this is the L33 5.3 that we're going to be putting in our budget race car, street car, the shit horse. We also got uh, some new valve seals. There's uh, intake specific ones and exhaust specific ones. You can see one's dark red, one's black. I guess the exhaust is probably made out of a more Heat resistant rubber. Viton. It's Viton, is that what they use? Viton. Vitten. 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 So I'm just oiling those up. Those get pushed on. Make the valve stem a good oiling. Slide it through. Just like that. Comes with this dube, is actually you're supposed to put it over the valve so it doesn't tear the uh, seal. Next we're going to install the valve springs. We went ahead and cleaned up the uh, locks and keepers, or retainers, sorry, already. Clean just given the valve uh, springs a blowout. And we'll be good to go. Some cardboard remnant. Alright, so now we're installing these trick flow valve springs. See the uh, part number on the side there. They're a pretty common set to get for LS engines allow us to uh, bump the RPM limit up a bit and uh, overall better performance hopefully. So this is a valve spring compressing tool. The bottom side will go on the face of the valve, the top here. Compress it like so. And then put the two little locks in there. and hope it doesn't shoot out and hit you in the eye, basically. Yeah, you gotta be a little careful either. with uh, this, but usually it's good. 
we did the other head already, so that's done. We got the uh, lifters soaking in some oil here, getting ready to go in. We'll continue on these heads. Another final step you want to do is Make that. Sure those locks are seated and good. One master built set of, what are these, 799s? Seven seven nine 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 nine. So now we're going to stab this cam in there. Rob's not here though, he might get angry. Why? He's missing, missing the cam install. Rob only cares about the S10. Yeah, that's true. This camshaft a lot of you have probably heard of, especially fans of Sloppy Mechanics, you will know. It is the E1840P Pro Stock. Pro Stock. Pro Stock. That's it's the a, same one Warren Johnson used. It's a fancy that. bump stick. But uh, this cam is cheap. It's about, well, what, 260 compared to other ones being around 330 mark. So it's definitely got a bit of a budget advantage there. And it makes good power. And it sounds good from the YouTube clips we've heard, so well, thought we'd give it a try. This should be good for what we want to do. A little turbo like we got. We just want that chop, really. It's all about that chop. Yeah. And the question is, will it slide in without issue? Because if you've seen the earlier episodes of our engine building series... Well, I just took the stock cam that we had in there and slid out like nobody's business, so... I mean, if it doesn't fit, we can always just get the brake cone out, right? So, we'll figure it out, guys. Three finger. We'll be using some Permatex Ultra Slick Red Assembly Lube to get this thing all lubed up. You always want to have proper lubrication before sticking your shaft in any tight places. How's she feeling? Good. Real good. Five. Spins nice. Who says we can install cam bearings? Obviously that assembly lube really <laughs> sticks it up, but no, that spins good. Got the cam plate cleaned up and two of the uh, mounting hardware bolts. Clean's just gonna find the others. We're gonna clean those up, put a dab of Loctite on them, and then uh, lock this cam into place. Should've brought the torque wrench. Oh yeah. We're gonna need uh, an old friend for the next step. Yeah, that's the wrong drawer. There it is. It's also Clayton's favorite tool. I hate this. He hasn't mentioned that before. Wow, he cleaned up his sockets. I still don't know where they got. This time I ended up on Jag's website. They said to Jeez. torque these down to 20 foot pounds. So, 18, I thought you said. 18, but you know, Bendy only reads so low, so. Round it up a little Round bit. Round it up. Now me and Clayton are gonna get the timing set on. There's the timing gear, the timing chain, which is new, that Clayton uh, just washed. Why do we get a new one again? Timing chains? Yeah. Stretch is the, one. <coughs> the stock is stretched. It's ready to okay, guys, this is going to be funny then, because when we put this one on, it's going to be loose as shit as well, so oh, Clayton's going to be disappointed. Because well, that's how LSs are for the most part. Too. Good thing about this cam as well is the uh, stock stuff just goes right back on, whereas the LS9 cam that I have in the Sonic Stang, it's cheaper, but you have to get a different cam gear front cover, and front cover sensor. and sensor. Well, is it cheaper? Probably not. Probably not unless you can get that stuff from your friend. Or a junkyard. Or your junk friend. <laughs> your friend's junkyard. What we're looking for here is the mark here and the dot there on the crankshaft. They have to line up like that. And then you put the chain on and uh, everything is good. If not, your uh, cam is off time and your valves will hit your pistons more than likely and all kinds of bad stuff like that. Boom. That, that's sloppy, just how they are, guys. They're sloppy mechanics. Does nobody run a dual? If you chain? feel yeah, your uh, stock chain and it's like this, and you're like, oh man, that thing's spent. No, that's just kind of how they are. There is a tension, or like a thing you can put here. This one actually has the holes for it and everything. It's like a dampener that goes in there. Mine has it. Are we supposed to have it? No, well, I've never had one. Torque specs for these bolts are 26 foot-pounds, so we'll torque those down with the bendy. And that'll be uh, the cam installed. Sloppy Stage 2, a.k.a. SS2. Is that what they call it? That's what they're calling it now, yeah. SS2. Sketchy. The next step is going to be putting the oil pump on this thing. And we actually got a new one, guys, so. Master build, you know. It's a, what was it, Summit brand, but it's... It's a melling, it's, it's just, a it comes in a Summit box, but it's a melling pump. 
USA. There's a lot of different ways, well, not a lot of different ways, but there's one way that's very complicated. Involving feeler gauges jammed in here, which we showed you on uh, Rob's engine, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Because he did it that way, but this time we're just going to send it, as they say. we got to find the heart. Rate. And uh, put it, jam it right on there. Well, I'm sure they're here. Just Careful how heavy is that? Well, pretty heavy to box. <laughs> Full of voltage. It could be in there, because that's like the knock sensors. Are LS in box. It's all parts from that engine. We're looking for the stock hardware we took off this thing. And uh, since we're in this box, I thought I'd show you guys this. I don't know if you've seen. Our fancy parts, custom cut billet arrived. No, I'm just kidding. It's factory, but they got cleaned really well. So, you know, master build. Only the best quality for this thing. Do you remember if they were like short or long? Okay, go easy. Easy squeezy. Like, you know what I mean? At any moment, the lifters are Yeah, no, slide. I see them. You should put your hand there. Just like engine masters, guys. See? That's what I was I got him, about. I got him. Oil's expensive, we don't want to waste it. So I'm putting the hole to the front. To the front, motherfuckers. Yeah, put it to the front. What's that, Clayton? Could you explain, elaborate on that? You're putting what, the hole in the lip? Where is the hole? This hole. I don't see it. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Feet hole. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Like I said, a lot of people. From what I've read, says it doesn't matter. Just a little tip for some people. Uh, you can get this kit right here from Summit. I'm guessing that's the part number. Um, it comes with the lifters, the trays, the bolts, and it was cheap, like 140 bucks, something like that. And it was way cheaper, and apparently they are LS7 lifters, or they're the same as an LS7 lifter. Hmm. So. What that means, I don't know. All I know is they were a lot cheaper than the actual LS7 lifter, so. And it came with everything. Where did the other trays go? Oh, did you close it? Oh, okay. I was showing them all. So this is the timing cover that came off that 5.3. I had cleaned it up really nice previously and taken out the uh, seal there. And then when we got parts for it, the seal did not get ordered. So we don't have a seal, but we have another timing cover with seal. So I'm gonna be working on cleaning this thing up. Then we can throw that on there as well. Clayton's got all the lifters and trays in the engine now. He tightened them down to nine foot-pounds. Very, very specific, the nine foot-pounds. This is one case where I would definitely advocate just for tight, keeping in mind you're clamping down on plastic, but Mr. Precision over here, you know. So now he's giving the, uh, the heads a precision deck. Razor blade deck. Razor blade deck on the back of the S10. This is a good spot, Rod. You, you should, uh, should leave the box off. This is as far as I'm going to go with this thing. It's definitely clean and the outside looks good enough to not be painted and just thrown on the engine. We're just going to go with the head gaskets that came out of this engine, reinstall them. Factory LS, multiple layer steel. We we're going to get some, but then they are out of stock. Those have been reused, what, this is the second or third time we've had the heads off? No, the second time. They're the original gaskets that came with that engine. Yeah. I cleaned them up, we put the engine together. Well, we pulled it apart before we... We always do the in. Permatex spray on there for uh, extra yeah, little help. We had the heads off at another time, so this would be the third time. Mm -hmm. Why did we have the heads off it again? Because it was fucking clacking and the oil pressure. Oh yeah, we, no, because then we put the heads on the six liter, remember? No. Uh, yeah, and we put the six liter back in. We changed the rod. We had this engine in. It was clacking. We took it out and we put the six liter back in, and then it was also clacking. After we bent a rod. Right, and we put the heads, these heads on that engine with the six liter gaskets, not these ones. So these are only been on once. Oh, I see. Yeah. Now we're putting the uh, timing cover on. Starting to button this. What do you mean? Uh, you, need to you can squirt it in from the other side. He did. He greased the seal or oiled it or whatever you wanted him to do. That's this one he was oh talking about God, putting oil on. the only one that's got friction on it. I know, but... And you're gonna just send it home dry. You could put a little bit of oil on the balancer when you put it on. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm 
was thinking. But. All right, so I put just a little bit of oil on this seal, even though these guys didn't seem to think it was necessary, but it's like an oil filter. You want it to seal against the surface here, right? So I got this ready, my first bolt in here. Hopefully this is the last time we got to open this crap up. And I'm just going to loosely bolt it on here. And then we're going to use the crank pulley tool, installer tool that Rob made to make this align properly. What are you doing there, Fox? What are you doing, Fox? Doing what I've been asked to do. Does that feel good? <laughs> Does that feel good? <laughs> when you're blowing the air... I got these bolts just very loosely in here. The uh, cover can still move around. And we have this here, which Rob made, just out of a uh, stock crank pulley. Cut off the actual pulley, so we just got this little thing. We can pop right in here. Oh, I also opened up the ID. So yeah, I'll, yeah. That, that, I kind of missed that part, but that's obvious by uh, how it slid on there. So you just push that in, and then you get this in proper alignment, tighten down all the bolts. Clayton uses his fancy torque wrench, and then we move on to the next thing. We gave these stock head gaskets a clean and some solvent, blew them off with some air, and uh, well, they're good enough. So we put some uh, this red stuff here on. High tax spray a gasket, Permatex. Seems to have worked in the past. We've never had a head gasket issue yet with uh, any of the iterations of the shit horse. There they are, guys. The engine is basically all together at this point. Clayton's just gonna put some oil on the head bolts. We're gonna bolt them on there. We can get the uh, valley cover on. That's all torqued and on there now. I'm putting the cam so. and the crank sensor in right now. Yeah. The cam and the crank? Cam and the crank sensor. We're filling all the blocks holes. One by one, the team of four of us guys. So we got the factory head bolts back in. That's what we're going with on this build. They uh, should be sufficient. I mean, if they're not, I guess we'll find something new out. Uh, we got the live stream going, and everyone's kind of just doing LS 5.3 shit horse things right now. Where'd I leave off? That, that's exactly what you want to say when you're doing head bolts. So Clayton did a first round at uh, 40, right? 40, yeah, it says. Some, I read 22 somewhere, but... Yeah, and now we're going to 65? Yeah. Yeah. I'll get one more check here. Evidently, you have to take out the uh, coolant... You don't have ...transfer to. thing ports. What do you mean you don't have to? To get a good... To get some bolts? Nice and square I think I got mine on without taking them out. Maybe? Well, if you're maybe not. Di differing opinions, but uh, clean well, dish. If you, you can't the get in there, it then... doesn't fit. Look, yeah. Right. Maybe I did have to take them off. I don't know. See, now Jan is using a different socket that was skinnier. Or I used a different socket that was skinnier, maybe. We're getting off topic here. So it looks like that's going to be about as far as we get with this thing in this episode of Engine Masters on SPP TV. The original shit horse intake. We could have put the back cover on. I haven't seen this thing in a while. That's that's pretty looking. That's party. Pork it or tighten it all the way. New seal? No. Boom. I just put it in there to see if it would fit. Damn! Look at that thing. Yeah, no. Ten fifty with the boost cranked up. I think this thing is going nines. That's, that's just my opinion. You're not, a little bit of a dreamer. Not with that turbo. Not with the current, maybe, shocks. I think it go mid-10s, probably, with this new engine and stuff. It's definitely going to make a lot more power. At the same boost level, it'll go mid-10s. if we put a 75 on it... Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Then maybe 9s. But then you... Oh, well, you we might want to look at putting new shocks on the rear at that point. Yeah. We got a bunch of other accessory stuff to put on this engine. Which you will see in an upcoming episode of How to Build an LS Engine on SPP TV. So make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Master Builder Clayton.